<sighs> From the Buddha, we have the quote, holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else, but you're the one who gets burned. We spend much of our lives forming attachments, good, bad, or otherwise to things, to people, to places, to thoughts, to emotions, to emotions, to things in our lives. And we can become overburdened with things that are no longer serving us. These things turn from being things that serve us and instead become burdens that can harm us. In some of the older Hindu thought, they share the idea that suffering stems from holding on to that which does not serve the soul. And while we cling to those things because they're familiar and they seem comforting, and we fear they will not be replaced or will be gone from our lives forever, in all the ways we need to let them go. So the same Hindu teaching offers that the truth of the matter is the space will be filled best when you make a conscious decision to let go of what's just sitting in that space. You need to find what is actually serving you to fill that space. It goes on to offer that letting go of the things that don't serve you best can be as simple as sometimes dropping thoughts, maybe working to let go of the emotion or the circumstance that takes up residency within you, or maybe consider letting go of a negative relationship. Another way to think of this um, that I offer you is some wonderful wisdom from a 1986 movie, The Labyrinth. If you don't know this film, I would encourage you to take some time to experience it if you can for no other reason than the amazing and wonderful prophet David Bowie. Now, in this film, the main character, Sarah, encounters a vast and unique cast of characters on an adventure. But the one I wanna talk about is called the Junk Lady. She's a Muppet. Now the Junk Lady in the film is a very tired looking Muppet. And she carries on her back everything she's ever encountered and literally is being crushed by the weight of it all. She even then attempts to explain to Sarah how a person needs to hold on to everything because you don't know when you might need it again. And how Sarah has to like grapple with this sort of interaction before she can shake off these things and move forward with her own adventure to the next phase. And I love this because it showcases the beautiful process that is the tapestry of living a full and complete life, encouraging the viewer, who were predominantly children, that they're gonna encounter many, many of those things. But some of those things have a time limit, and they should. And in the case of Sarah in the movie, she was reminded of the memories of a childhood plushie toy, but had the wisdom to know that remembering the times of her youth fondly is not the same as attempting to stop life and stay in that moment by only clinging to it. She let go of what was not serving her from her tiny childhood as she moved into her teen self. So she kept the memories and let go of the stuff that was just gonna wear her down. And th this is the process of living a full life. And you know, I personally think and feel that our first source of Unitarian Universalism gives us a lifeline into this. And I'm gonna quote it directly for those of you who are not super familiar, so you're good. The first source of Unitarian Universalism says, direct experience of that transcending mystery and wonder affirmed in all cultures, which moves us to a renewal of the spirit and an openness to the forces which create and uphold life. The first part of that source is really about the gathering of a life lived. All of us have this. All of us have these beautiful, unique lives we've lived. And I could go on and on with examples, just like Sarah's childhood plushie toy. But I really wanna narrow in a little bit on the second part with the words, renewal of the spirit and an openness to the forces which create and uphold life. We are literally being encouraged as Unitarian Universalists to keep the parts of our lived life that serve as a connection to creation, however, however you define that as individuals, right? And I feel one of the many ways that we could live into this source might be best served by shedding the parts that we're collecting that we no longer need when we're done with needing them. 
the first source is offering you this beautiful thread of a lifeline by encouraging you to let go of anything that's taxing you mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. This is an invitation to take inventory of your current circumstances. Investigate the areas in your life that are making you unhappy and are leaving you unfulfilled and consider what and how you might let it go. To the Hindu teachings that I referred to earlier, this literally is considered part of karmic cleaning, the cleaning of their souls from previous lives so that the life they're in and maybe their next life can be better. It's a spiritual act. Now, <laughs> this invitation is not to let go. It's not asking you to toss out the things that don't bring you joy anymore. You know, don't go out and quit your job because it gives you stress. And I know that's found in some really funny memes about declutter and organization on the internet. But I took some time and I considered how these modern systems that are asking us to declutter or asking us to look at our lives, how they, they're a little bit deeper. And they're actually asking you if the items in your home are of service to you as the whole person you aspire to be. It, if it's not helpful, these systems, both spiritual and the science I read earlier, are asking you to let them go. Take a moment, you know, be thankful for the times that they were helpful to you. And then use a spiritual practice to just say that's enough and let them go. Perhaps con consider if those items once made your life better and are now just making your rooms full or your heart full or your mind full or your soul heavy. <sighs> a full place with an empty heart is just as hard as being alone in a crowded room. And you deserve better. Each of you is the product of generation on generation of people who lived and who loved. And as you use, I think we sometimes forget to just celebrate the gift it is we get to experience as our fellow humans. I celebrate you and I invite you with all of your uniqueness that is a marvel and a wonder to consider what you might let go to make your life better. I read in the Bible the words of Jesus calling us to love each other, to love ourselves. I hear it in the stories of the Celtic people about how you honor your friends and how you honor your guests as a holy law and honoring the self. And finally, I read it in the different Hindu and Vedic words of love as part of each life's journey and adventure. So as you flow, on this path, gathering direct experiences. I hope you remember this invitation to keep only what you need as you need it, because you are also a transcending mystery and you deserve to be free. Even as you are whole, you deserve to be free and live the best possible life that you can. So this is my invitation to you. And I thank you for listening. Amen, Ashe, Nishere.